One thing that you know I feel about graffiti art is, unlike any other art form that I'm aware of, I mean it's created by kids. It's, a, it's an art form that has spanned the globe, and it came from children. I mean, you don't think of that so much now because so many that people that write are adults. But when you look at the beginnings of graffiti and you see the photos of these kids, you see like nine, ten, eleven-year-old kids out there, and they created this thing. Like yeah, that, that's amazing. I'm Doug One, CMF crew. I started writing graffiti in San Francisco Bay Area around 19, early 1984. I think at the time, you know, because in San Francisco, I mean, it's still so new that me and other people my age were kind of first generation kind of inventing it as we went along. But I think that New York writers, I mean, I think that once we saw Style Wars, it's like everybody there we're a fan of. You know, everybody style-wise, I mean, uh, these, which are pretty bad pictures, but this is probably kind of the, some of the earliest photos I have of anything I've ever done. But it's interesting to, to see how I was thinking at that time. Yeah. You know, to think of like, you know, I'm going in a direction where I'm, you know, kind of obviously influenced by people like, you know, K's 2 and all that, like kind of computer rock style. And I'm trying to take, put my own spin on that. And it's, I, don't know, I guess it's kind of interesting. It's, you know, it's still, it's very like, obviously thinking of myself back then, I'm like a kid using technical pens and rulers to draw graffiti in a book, you know. When you're in something, it's like, that's your life. You know, you don't, you disregard how they see how life should be. And I think that for not just myself, but I, I'd probably say this for most people that write graffiti. It's like your lifelong friends came from that. You know, your, uh, what you do for a living somehow might have came from that. All these things that are now part of your life came from going down the road at a, as a young person graffiti and your life wouldn't be the same had you not done that. I mean, really, I think that my most adventurous things are less bombing than they were racking paint and doing things like that. You know, that was always probably more exciting because now you have the bounty, you have what you want. Remember when I was, uh, you know, maybe say like young kid, 14, 15 years old, man, we. We're in downtown San Francisco at this uh, auto body spot on 7th Street. I knew that they had kind of every kind of odd ball color of Krylon that you could think of. But one night I got some friends down there. We um, brought some duffel bags and broke in from the front, broke into like one of those small little pane windows that I was at that time. Went in there, filled up duffel bags, broke out the back window. And we have like two duffel bags of all this paint maybe you know, over a hundred cans between the three of us, and we're fucking pumped. About a block away, see some dude run, run up, and he says something to one of my friends, and he was like, dude, fucking, fucking narcs, real fucking cops, threw the fucking bag, started running, took off, and realized, man, there were fucking undercover cops all over there, wrapped us up for all, <laughs> for all the paint we thought we had, you know? You know, night in juvie hall, and then community service. Transition from graffiti, it's, you know, my first move outside. It's like I start getting into illustration. Right out of um, an art college working for uh, Think Skateboards in San Francisco. Yeah, that's I had replaced. Actually, Mike Giant was working there right before me. And once he, he left, I kind of, you know, ended up in that position. When I came to New York, it was really, I guess, for us to start something. And at that point, we started, you know, our company, now Morning Breath, Inc., as far as anything that I've accomplished, I guess that's probably it. It's like creating Morning Breath Inc. We've done tons of, you know, skateboard, apparel graphics. We've done a lot of, uh, we really started with doing a lot of album artwork, a lot of, you know, music packaging, art directing, design. A few years ago, we did this. This is a super limited album that we did for DJ Qbert. What's super cool about this, man, is this insert right here kind of mimics as a turntable. It has a uh, connects through bl uh, Bluetooth. Oh, wow. And then it has all the inks that printed this are uh, like electrically uh, conductive ink. So all the circuitry on it works through uh, Bluetooth. We got uh, awarded a Grammy award for uh, music package design for this, for uh, the Desert Sessions, which is kind of, you know, another kind of all-star band started by uh, Josh Homie from uh, Queens of Stone Age. So that was, yeah, kind of, uh, you know, unexpected surprise. 
Yeah. Yeah. People, I'm sure, would be like, oh, it's so cool we got to do this thing. And we're just like, ah, fuck, another fucking, <laughs> when does it, when do we need to get it done by? <laughs> Which is probably a horrible attitude to have. It's right, like you get older and you're kind of, where are you at? creatively and you know you have sometimes that kind of self-doubt like you know is this you know am I still putting my all into it your your motor's not running at the same way as it was when it's in your 30s you start slowing down you start you know procrastinating in a way that's different than the, the, the high school kid procrastination you know I think there's always that bit in you that just that fight that you have of you know you still want to create good work and you still want to put something out there and it's not always going to be this like every day you're you know, encouraged and excited to do it. But sometimes stepping back from it, I think maybe paints a clearer picture and almost clears the focus on looking at the big picture instead of just like the, the rush to get something done.